Hello, this is Ken Ferry with this week's Boots in the Field report. I'm telling you guys, I'm pumped on this corn stand that I'm seeing. I'm seeing field after field of really good stands. Now we do have some uneven emergence in a few fields. Most of them were the soil finisher maybe got too far ahead of the planters and that soil dried out with these kind of temperatures we're dealing with. Some of this corn ended up in dry soil and those areas in the field that got firmed up with wheel traffic were slower to give up moisture. And you can see the wheel tracks show up, especially if it was worked at an angle to what you're planting. But with that said, this year may go down in the record books as one of the best corn stands I've seen in our customer base. Not only are their stand counts excellent, the uniformity of these stands are is just unreal. When corn comes up in four days, it doesn't make any difference whether we planted it spike down, spike up, sideways, it's all coming up the same day. Already at two collar corn, we can start to make some pretty good estimates on what ear count will be based on uniformity. Again, anything more than a collar behind isn't going to put on an ear. This May planted corn has the making of being, if not the highest ear counts, um, going to be right there with one of the highest we've ever seen. If there was ever an example of being patient, keeping the powder dry until conditions are right, and then pull the trigger and get her done, this is the year. I know this is just the first inning and we got a lot of game left to play. Only God knows what lies ahead of us, but big yields come from big stands and this crop has a great foundation under it. We just must do everything in our power to get it to play out that way. What we call the carbon penalty is now in full swing. As soil temperatures skyrocketed from 50 degrees back on May 1st to the mid-70s by May 11th, it woke up the soil biology. Soil microbe populations double every 10 degrees the soil temperature goes up. These microbes temporarily consume a lot of nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Here at CropTech, we, and by we I mean Jared, pull nitrates one and two foot deep every week in the same area to track the carbon penalty. We've been doing this from thaw out to freeze up for decades. We watch the change in the one and two foot values every week. If we get big rains, we'll see the one foot value of nitrates drop and the second foot will rise, indicating leaching. When the one foot drops and the second doesn't rise, and we have no crop out there to consume this nitrate, we know the carbon penalty is underway. This herd of biology that we woke up is consuming nutrients, temporarily tying them up. Over the past two weeks, the nitrate levels have been like the stock market. They've been dropping like a rock. This drop will continue for two to three weeks in bean stubble, six to seven in corn on corn. What that means for some of these cornfields is they will show a light green to yellow coloring. This will be especially true for some of the April planted corn that is no longer living off of seed reserves and is getting ready to hand off to the true roots. High residue fields like corn on corn or cover crop fields will show the biggest uh, symptoms of this. We call this the ugly corn stage. We try to manage around this stage if we can, especially with our G and L1 hybrids. The goal is to never let your corn have a bad day. If in the next few weeks you see your corn having a bad day, we, we, we may want to have a discussion on what we can do to improve that. We will see many bean fields experience a carbon penalty as well. Soybeans don't produce a lot of their own in until they're at V4. So until then, you're going to see some yellowing in the beans. Now, this is not a big concern with beans as we have not found a yield drag from the carbon penalty in beans. Many growers have been pulling nitrate samples and the numbers so far look good. As I work with these samples, we can tell the fields that have received more rain. In those fields, the first and second foot nitrates are almost equal. The good news is, 
We can account for most of the end. The bad news is, is half of it is already in the second foot, which does carry some risk if it continues to rain, uh, or at least heavy rains. The drier areas, two thirds of the end is in the top foot which is where we want it with the small corn shallow root systems. You guys pulling nitrates are seeing the same thing I'm seeing, excellent stands. This is evident by the stand counts you are turning in and the fact that most of you are bumping your yield goals. Remember our NREX are tied to yield goals, population along with organic matter and your ISNT values. If you think you have a shot at bumping yield goals 20 bushel based on your stands, but don't let us know so we can adjust your end rates, that 20 bushel increase will only happen in your mind, not in the field. Many of you seasoned VRT N growers who are applying variable rate N understand the importance of nitrate testing and how important it is to get us all the correct information on what was applied so we can balance the checkbook for you. We have a lot of growers who are new to VRT this year due to the price of the stuff. You guys need to take the time to fill out the nitrate forms correctly. If you did not apply 200 pounds of DAP last fall because of price, you're missing 36 pounds of N and it's got to be accounted for. If you're having trouble, with the nitrate system, call the office and the girls will walk you through it. We do it all online. If you cut corners filling out that nitrate form, you'll get a call from Katie before we can process your results. So you might as well do it right the first time. Pest teams, the cutworms are now cutting plants as predicted. It started last week. We're getting pictures and reports of feeding from a number of areas. Matt is seeing the cutting over there in Quincy. Uh, we're seeing the cutting here in McLean and DeWitt County. Remember, this is the start of it. Cutting will continue until the corn is too big. Now, the old threshold was 3% cut plants. With these corn prices, I think I'd move that to 1.5%. These critters are too easy to kill, so don't let them mess with these stands. The big flights were April 22nd through May 2nd. Think back. Any field that had vegetation back then, even if you tilled it after that date, it'll need to be watched. Corn planted into cover crops will also need to be watched close. This includes those of you who use henbit and chickweed as your cover crop. For those of you on the pest team, you'll get a kick out of this. These last two weeks, I've been working with a lot of growers on what to do with some of these poor bean stands that got caught in the crust. So I've been throwing the hula hoop a lot. Two days in a row, my hula hoop took off on me. In a field in Livingston County, the hoop rolled over a quarter of a mile before coming to rest at a fence. It looked like a tire coming off a truck going down the interstate. It just kept going and going. The same thing happened the day before in Dewitt County. But I never found my hula hoop. It may be still rolling, headed towards Springfield. Anybody sees it, go and buy, grab it. I think I may have to put a string on my hula hoop on windy days to retrieve it. I've been throwing a hula hoop for decades and never had one get away until this year and it happened twice in two days. The bean leaf beetle feeding is heavy in some areas. If you're seeing 30 to 40 percent feeding on the unifoliate leaves and feeding on the cotyledons, we need to take them out. The corn college plots here at the campus are looking great. Uh, registration is now open for the Corn College, July 26th, 27th. Go to our website and you can see the agenda there and get enrolled. Our soil testing crews are banging away on the summer testing. If you haven't turned in your summer testing needs, let's get that done. Everyone here at CropTech would like to take the time and thank all military vets and their families, past and present, for your service to this country. On this Memorial Day weekend, take a moment to say a prayer visit a cemetery, or in some way pay respect to the thousands of men and women who gave their all for our country. It's because of them that we farm in the greatest nation on earth with freedom and security. It was their sacrifices that made this possible. We pray for our fellow Ukrainian farmers and military as they're attempting to secure their freedom. There are so many things we take for granted that are a gift from the great men and women 
who gave it their all for us. For this, we'll be forever grateful. Thank you. To stay up to date, check out our website at croptechinc.com and subscribe to our podcast, Boots in the Field Report. Keep her safe, keep her moving.